We got some hotter than expected inflation data last week, but Chicago Fed President Austin Goolsby telling the Financial Times it's clear the overall slowdown in inflation is a trend, not just a momentary blip. Join us right now, former Atlanta Fed President Dennis Lockhart. He's now a professor at Georgia Tech. So is Austin right? Is power? What, what, who is right in this? And, and, and what, what do you think is going to really happen? I see it the way Austin sees it, um, and that is that, the, that we are in a disinflationary trend, but the month-to-month -month numbers sometimes jump around a little bit. The, um, the the last report, the CPI report that came in, I, I thought it was uh, consistent with that story, but it really didn't tell you very much. Um, there was simply not a lot of new news in that report. Um, so I think we can say, yes, the, there's a dis disinflationary trend underway. Disinflationary trend underway that leads you to believe our economy is where in call it six to 12 months? Probably uh, weaker than it is today. We're coming off, of course, a third quarter that was, uh, by most accounts, extraordinarily strong. And uh, as Rick was pointing out in just his earlier report on the Empire State uh, Empire State series, uh, it looks like there are some indications that the economy is slowing. This is desired slowing from the right. Fed's perspective. Uh, but I do begin to pick up indications that maybe the economy is turning over to something weaker in the fourth quarter and going into 2024. But we're saying weaker is good in this sort of perverse way. Yeah, and it is good in the sense that, uh, first, the Fed has been predicting that uh, that they could not get to 2 percent without uh, some weakening and without some uh, effect on employment as well. And uh, I think there is a, 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 a certain scope for desired slowing, desired uh, uh, worsening of the economy. And then after that, of course, it, it changes dramatically when when you get into the undesired uh, s s scheme of things. And um, the, the Middle East uh, developments, I think, present some scenarios that could put some downside risk into the picture. So it's a tricky period, I think, for the Fed to navigate. At this point, when you look at uh, the possibility of interest rate hikes, what does it look like to you? I think they hold in uh, November. I think at this, uh, given all the circumstances in play at the moment, I think they would prefer to uh, simply watch how the situation evolves. And I don't think there is a compelling case for making a move at the November 1st meeting. So in my, in, in my expectation, and I think many people in the market believe this as well, uh, they will not ra raise rates in November. Hey, Dennis, we had uh, someone from J.P. Morgan who was with us earlier who was just talking about how th things are really going to be kind of putting a floor under Treasury yields, that there's so many things happening, the idea that the government is needing to raise more money to fund the deficits, mm -hmm. um, just the idea that we have these deficits and the debt that is racked up. Um, on top of lots of other things that are kind of coming at this place. Is that, that your idea, too, that there's a floor on this and it's only going to go higher from here? Well, I, you know, the, the term rates, I think, uh, under certain really adverse circumstances related to the uh, Israeli situation could go lower because the flight to quality is going to push yields down as people are buying treasuries and um, and buying the dollar as well. So... Uh, I, I, I would expect volatility here to continue, <clears throat> and I think it's somewhat unpredictable. It depends a great deal on something that is really far outside of the scope of Fed control, and that is geopolitical events. She also had the idea, though, that the Fed, that Jay Powell is really in the position where he wants to rid the market participants of this idea that the Fed is always going to be there to bring the punch bowl back, that if times uh, get a little tougher, if the economy softens, that doesn't mean that rates are going to come down and that they will be stepping in, especially if it means to help asset prices. Yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> I can see that argument. Uh, at, at the beginning of your sentence, you, you said Jay Powell sort of thinking about how to 
to uh, uh, interact with the market. And in my experience, so over um, several years, but now fairly dated, uh, there's not a lot of strategizing about how to affect market rates simply because it's it's uh, so difficult for Fed action to actually produce a particular result in the market. So I, I think in a very general sense, you're probably right, but I don't think there's a, a lot of tactical thinking going on on, on how to get a, a particular rate level or to, to somehow uh, get the market to behave in a certain way. Hey, Dennis, I know it's hard to look out 12 months, but there is an expectation among some economists that we might be getting into a period where we might actually have to have uh, cuts at that point. Is that still in the cards for you? Still in the cards in the sense that the the overall environment today just is, has uh, so much uncertainty and a great deal of risk. As I said earlier, I think the um, Israeli situation has injected a new element of risk, and there are scenarios in which it's, you know, it could affect the U.S. economy in an undesired way. Uh, having said that, at, at least in the very recent data, it's very hard to see a recession coming because the economy is is uh, plugging along very strongly and the employment situation remains uh, uh, well below 4 percent. So, uh, and, and I think that, by the way, gives confidence to consumers and consumers really drive the economy. So it's hard to see a recession in the near term, but I don't think you can rule it out given the total mix of factors out there today.